<laughs> Hello, my beautiful guest. I see you in the back studio. Hello, my beautiful audience. Hello, my beautiful diamond beauties. We I normally get a prayer in before the session, and then I, I ask my guests to have a dance on my forever song. And because I was trying to get hold of one of the guests, our time just ran out, and I dance on our opening video, and I almost <laughs> didn't turn around to see you all. So I hope that you are feeling amazing. And can I tell you a secret? It's November the 30th. Can you believe it? <laughs> one month, one month for 2023. We had so many recordings done for the network with all my beautiful diamond beauties this week. We had a Christmas show. We had three New Year's recordings. And I had a lot of ladies that we recorded. And all of them said that 2023 was one of their best years. So if 2023 is one of your best years, then just know that 2024 is times X, 10 times X. So how incredible. But can I ask you something? Are you ready to receive miracles in 2024? Are you open to receive miracles in 2024? But there is a secret. There is a secret. So if you allow me to tell you, the secret is you have to start to love yourself unconditionally. Love yourself. Then you can love other people. Take care of yourself and you can take care of other people. But the biggest of everything that you must believe in yourself. And if you can make a promise to yourself and you can keep your promise, your body, your, your mind, your heart, your soul will help you to accomplish more and more. And before you know it, you have accomplished a lot. But start with you. Start with self-love. I've got amazing guests. I've got amazing guests. I cannot wait to introduce them to you. So my beautiful ladies and gentlemen, do you want to take three deep breaths with me? So that you, I can bring you right now, here in the moment. Are you ready? Here we go. In. Exhale. Another one in. Exhale. Last one. Excel. As I do not have a sponsor for this show, I am going to play E360 TV video. And then my guest is here. My guest is here. Here we go. <laughs> my guest is here. My guest is here. <laughs> oh, I love my beautiful guest. I'm oh, so happy to see you. I have to get that little shimmy shake in there. <laughs> <laughs> and before I start with you, my beautiful Deborah, I quickly want to speak to the diamond, um, um, beautiful diamond beauties. So, my beautiful diamonds, remember. We are a private group. And Rick, we are 633 ladies. It's like fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. So, my beautiful ladies, remember because we are a private group, 
we sometimes Facebook don't let us see who it is. So if you can put your name in the front and your message or the message and your name, then we can see who is giving us love. Because when we go on to um, the Diamond Buddhist, we can see who has given us love, but it doesn't show here. So uh, we will do a shout out today if you give us some love. So we are truly excited to have beautiful Tabura. And Tabura, you are quite long in the Diamond Beauties. I didn't go and check, but I think you were uh, almost 18 months in the Diamond Beauties. Yeah, um, it's been a yeah. while. Yes, and as in the first time, well, it you would have come, and then you can, if you want to tell us, you had an amazing experience with a beautiful grandson's birth. But if you, if I can just quickly mention, you are always so positive on the group, and you always give so beautiful comments. And please, you can do more, and you can also do a lot of posting because you, my beautiful one, are always so with it if i can call it you always like yes let us do this come on ladies i love it i love it and first of all i love your your hat and secondly that beautiful painting with the cowboy boots <laughs> my 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 family lives in dallas texas or while well, both of you know texas and dallas they stay, I always say Dallas because it's just easy for people that don't know, but they actually are um, 11 miles from Fort Worth. So they're nearer to Fort Worth than, than Dallas, mm -hmm. about 45 miles from, from Dallas. But yeah. uh, you will know, but the others is die in Dallas. Everybody <laughs> so my, thinks I'm from Texas, but I'm from Florida. <laughs> But I think it's that because everybody, in, and I tell you, there's a few visits already in the many years they were there, a, a lot of stuff happening in, in Texas because everything is bigger than everywhere else. I know, that's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> is it true? true? Rick, is it, it true? It is true. <laughs> it is true. When we moved here from California, that's what we noticed. The food and everything just all big <laughs> you know, I, I think it's the biggest in texas is their personalities and their love for life that's yes. what i've noticed my husband's son lives um i think right outside of houston but um he, he he said he goes people here are just everybody's happy everybody's wanting to help everybody else it's so different he came from california and california is just very different for him yeah yes. same, same here we noticed the same thing moving from california uh -huh. yeah. So before I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to Buro, can I just say the first time I saw, um, um, I, I think they call it a, a, a sky dancer. Is that man that goes like, what is that? They call it a sky dancer. Is one of those plastic dolls. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. The car, with the cars, you can buy a car there. Then this thing is there in the air yeah. and he keeps, on, he keeps on doing this he keeps on. it's the first time i saw it i love a sky dancer i say i will i will tell sometimes my grandchildren come 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 do as a sky dancer and then they yeah. <laughs> 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 so oh, I so also funny. saw it there the first time, and we do have sky dancers now here in South Africa. Not a lot, but they are not as tall and you know as so bright as the the, the we we are so in Texas. So my <laughs> beautiful Tabura, I want to ask you: Can you please introduce yourself? Tell I us where you're from, and then also tell us what self love means for you. Um, my name's Deborah Swayze. I am 40. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a retired nurse of 40 years. I'm 67 and live in Northeast Florida. And believe it or not, I look healthy and I thought I was healthy most of my life, but it was the emotional part that I think was making me unhealthy. And three years ago, I had a stroke. And by the grace of God, it was a stroke that as a nurse, I knew what was happening and I was able to get treatment for, you know, there's a little mental slowness that I've noticed and left-sided weakness, but altogether it hasn't stopped me from being who I am. But what it taught me um, is self-love 
because I wasn't giving myself self-love. As a nurse and a single mother raising two kids, my biggest thing in life was being the server. I'm just a server by nature. And as when I, even during the time I worked full time, I always volunteered to the Red Cross. I was a nurse for their hurricane shelters, their health fairs. I worked with Meals on Wheels, bringing meals to the elderly and the poor, and also with hospice. I worked for them for five years, but when I quit and went elsewhere, I still volunteered for them. So I was always wanting to give to people. To me, giving was my way of showing love. But a lot of times people don't receive that that way. It, it's... I noticed such a shift in three years when I started pulling away from doing, but trying to learn who I was, who's Deborah now that she's not that server, that, that volunteer, that nurse. And I realized I was giving so much of myself away that I wasn't taking care of myself mentally. Now I worked out, I ate right. I did all of those things. I worked for two health and wellness companies, and even though I was doing that, wasn't taking care of myself. And once I started realizing that people were pulling away from me because I was loving me, it made me want to love me more. And it made me realize that, you know, the saying, your vibe attracts your your tribe. And and that's what's happened. I mean, look, I've met you and you're just such Mm -hmm. a radiant light. You know, you, you, I told everybody, if you guys can make it to watch this show, this lady is just a a ray of light. And, Mm -hmm. and we know not all of us have good days all the time, but it's how we handle and go through those good days. And I've learned that, you know, if people don't like the word no coming from me, because I never could say no, then they don't love me enough. To, to, let, to say, well, it's okay, don't drive me here or don't do that. So self-love to me is knowing who you are. And if you don't know who you are, reach back to that little girl, that little girl who didn't know who she was and, and what kind of love she needed and maybe didn't get and give it to her now. You're never too old. You're never too old, you know, and and I always say, you know, you asked about a quote, you know, I love that quote, you know, today I am too blessed to be depressed, too anointed to be disappointed (laughs) because, (laughs) you know, that's that's just life. You've got to be able to grab it when you can. I mean, there's so many bad times that if you don't find those little golden nuggets of of love and happiness and, and hold them close to you. I don't think you're living. And I think for a long time, I I really wasn't living. I was doing, but I wasn't nurturing. Now it's like, you know, my biggest saying I never understood that my grandmother used to say in Italy, and now I get it. After me, you come first. Oh, wow. Wow. I love it. I never got it. I never got it. What? What? I love it. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. After after me, you came first. Yeah. I'm going to tell it to my husband. (laughs) Yeah. And then there was a coach I met that used to always say, live and die on empty. And that's what I want to do. I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my beautiful Deborah, will you please, when we finish with the show, will you go and put it for us in the YouTube yeah. channel? Because everybody is going to say, we want that, we want that. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love you, my girl. I love you. Thank and you I so love much. you. <laughs> Thank you. My beautiful Rick, first of all, I want to tell the beautiful Diamond Beauties and also the beautiful viewers out, I met uh, Rick through a, a, a group that we are in CLA and I totally forgot to post it on the CLA my beautiful Rick I, I'm sorry but I will go back tomorrow and I will say you were on the show and here is the recording and I thought you I like this gentleman he is 
amazing. And for being part of my vision is to make the world a better place. Your vision is exactly the same. And I love it. And I, Deborah, this man, I said, I love, love, love. And then it's our two year anniversary at um, Diamond Beauties. And Rick have let me know that he wants to give us a, a, a gift. He actually gave us three gifts. To, to say congratulations on our two-year anniversary. I was blown away by this man. It was like, wow, I love you. I loved him the first time I met him because he danced with me. I loved to dance. Did. <laughs> you did? You did? That's the first. That's, that, that's only the second time I've ever danced on Zoom. So that was, <laughs> yeah. And the other was a meditation, uh, a meditation workshop. So that was more expected, but. Um, yeah, that was that was totally different. I told my wife she loved it. <laughs> so, Rodrigo, what dance did we do? What was your favorite song? Uh, it was the song from uh, from my wife and I from our wedding. It was uh, "Always and Forever." Always, oh, yes. old song, old song yeah. from the seventies. Yeah. So first of all, I, when I I said to Rick, "Will you have a dance with me?" But when I looked up, his eyes were like, "And now?" I said, <laughs> "Yes, now." And he said, "Okay." Normally, people don't get up, but he got up. He was dancing with me. And then I could see your heart, my beautiful Rick, and your heart was beautiful. <laughs> and then we had a coffee chat. Then you gave us it. And then you were on. I was like, wow, you were in the magazine, our first magazine, Diamond Mama magazine. So for me, my beautiful Rick, you are truly amazing. I sent also a few people to you. I was on your show. So I want to say thank you for making the world a better place. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for you. Please introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and tell us what self-love means for you. Yes, you're very welcome. Thank you for all those kind words. Um, I, I felt the same way when I met you. And like I said, I, 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 it's not like I dance on Zoom all the time. But um, as Deborah said, you're, you know, you're, you're so radiant and have such a, you know, wonderful energy that it's hard uh, not to, you know, to be contagious and not to feel that even through, even yeah. through the zoom screen. Um, so I could just uh, imagine in person, you know, if I ever make it to South Africa, but um, where you come over here, but uh, so I am a, uh, an ultimate success coach. I'm a best-selling author and I'm the founder of I spark change. And our mission at I spark change is to elevate individuals or, or empower individuals to elevate their social impact and spread positive change, make the world a better place. And um, I'm also a father of uh, three wonderful daughters, uh, my wife, uh, Tanya, of 27 years. And, um, and then that's, I mean, that's their, they're my uh, most important part of my life or my family, you know, my, my daughters and my wife. And uh, faith is a big is a big part for me. That's that's also super important for me as well. Um, so it wasn't always the case. Um, you know, when I was younger, I took a lot of things for granted and, and wasn't present in a lot of situations and, um, you know, wasn't as focused on my family and and everything. And, um, you know, a lot of that changed over time and, and realized that they're the most important, you know, gifts and time is the most valuable Thing that we have and um so now i seek to uh help make others aware of that and you know coach others to help improve themselves and their businesses and um and just help make the world better um like you said sine so yeah i'm so glad when when we met because i've had in the past three three years um especially i've had zooms and and calls with hundreds of people from all over the world and there's maybe a handful that you can feel their as i said earlier you can feel their energy you can feel their heart you know as you said sine uh, through the <laughs> through the zoom screen and so you're one of those people so that's where i knew that you know that you were special and that your group um you know was lucky to have you you know leading them Thank you, my beautiful Rick. And I remember when I told you, and uh, Deborah, you will know because I do that a lot. If I sign off, I will go, Mwah. Yeah. <laughs> kiss. Yeah. 
And just before we, I said I was going to put you in the back. And did you see? Uh, yep. uh, Deborah went Mwah, because she know that's yeah. what. Yep. But did she know my beautiful Rick? My interpretation of Mwah, Mwah, Do you know what it is? Uh, Deborah know, but I don't think you will know. You will love it. My, I, I'm coming up with beautiful names and beautiful things because like self-love in Ignite Me, that's my business name, spell slim. And yes, yep. uh, you know, I have lost a lot of weight. Yeah. So yep. yes, I have slimmed down, but my the Afrikaans word for, for slim is you are clever. So that's the self-love ignites me. And then uh, I... the. The reason why I want to kiss everyone, because even my husband said, I wish you could stop telling people they are beautiful. That's irritating because you call it. And a lot of people have called me out and said, please stop calling me beautiful. Please stop calling everybody beautiful. You don't make it special anymore. anymore. And then I will go like this. <laughs> I will do whatever I want. <laughs> I think it makes it more beautiful because you're yes. sharing that people have a beauty inside of them, all of them. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So the MWA stands for Moments with Authentic Hearts. What do you think about that? I love oh, it. That's a, that's a good one. I love that. I, I, I realized I didn't share my definition of self-love. I, I like the, the yes. authentic part of, you know, the authentic nature of, of that, because um, I, I, I'm i guessing that the people that tell you to not say beautiful are the people that don't understand that, that aren't as authentic with themselves exactly. or with others. And so that's why they don't have mm -hmm. that authentic heart, right? So they, they can't, they can't understand, understand where you're coming from or understand the expression of what you mean by, by calling them beautiful. I, I told my wife when you said, I'm like, yeah, she calls me beautiful Rick every time. And, you know, it's nobody's ever called me that. So, it, you know, it made me feel special, Absolutely. Um, you know, not not uncomfortable, just special. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, I understood it because I have no problem being who I am. Right. <laughs> being, being authentic. But my definition of self-love, because I, I realized I didn't share that with with you. And I think it's appropriate to share here is that um, it's to. Uh, to strive each day to become better. So to become a, a better version of yourself, um, one is to work on that. And then the second part is what, what my personal purpose is in life, um, which is an extension of that self-love, is to love and to give and to serve others. And, and you, can't, you can't do that, just like, uh, like Deborah's saying, you can't do that first without understanding who you are and loving yourself and and becoming better working on yourself first you can't you know pour into others so um so i think we're all on the same page with that i love it i love it so now you will uh, before i come back to you deborah now you will understand because my my motto for self love ignites me is show up, step up, soul up. So first of all, show up for yourself and others. Step up, take the action, and then when your cup is full, you soul up. You give your service to others. So now you understand where I got that also from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Oh and wow. It's so very true. Because I think sometimes when we want to give what we don't even have ourselves is when we we make ourselves so stressed out. And I have found that since I love myself first, not only have I weeded out the people that were not there for the right reason, mm. but I have brought in people that actually do care and love me. You know. And, yes. and it, you know that old saying, you know who your friends, you'll you'll find out real quick who your friends are, ask somebody to help you move or <laughs> that type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I love it. So my beautiful Debra, can you, can you tell us, uh, you actually uh, would have come to the show, the, uh, uh, I think about 
two months ago, but then something happened because I want to show your credentials. So I want you to tell us your beautiful story. And then um, you can also, I, I will have, I will ask you a question just after your beautiful story, if you can go ahead. Yeah, well, what I was supposed to come on and what happened is my connection with my niece is something that is more like a mother and daughter. It's so very ironic. I have a niece who's like a daughter and my daughter who is more like my sister's daughter. So it's a funny situation. But when uh, I was supposed to come on a few months back, uh, she had a baby boy. And it was so exciting because she had two children already. And she'd gotten married a year ago and almost a year to the day had a baby boy and has a family now to call her own because she was a single mother and it was such a blessing and and i had to share before i even told anybody because young girls now a lot of them and understandably don't share don't put this on online but i had to tell my beautiful girlfriend there because it was such a it was like having a grandson for me it was so beautiful when you when you when you share with me i got the tear more because then i remember but i miss my grandchildren in new zealand and all it was so yeah. beautiful so my beautiful deborah you, you have grown up in italy and italy uh, the italians love talking with their hands and just making food and just being that cozy well that is my observation because i love italy we also visit italy but just visit not stay but then you're also uh, in the middle east so mm -hmm. yeah my a lot of people have told me we need to write a book because i've like been around the world <laughs> i grew up um, I was born in New York, but only till I was a few months old. My dad w was working in Saudi Arabia for Aramco Oil. So they gave my mother came to New York with him to have me have a you know have a baby in a safe place. I didn't know what the hospitals were like, and I was raised over there and went to boarding school. The last three years I was there, so Switzerland one year, Italy the next year, and Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, the third year. So um, between that upbringing, I was always going to Italy to see my family in Rome. And that was my first language. So, so funny is everybody wonders why I, how do you flunk first grade? Well, I flunked first grade because I didn't speak any English when I went to an American school. I only yeah. spoke Italian. So it's my first language. And it, let me tell you, you got it right with the talking with the hands. My husband always says, he goes, the only way to tell an Italian to not speak up or talk to us is you got to tell them to sit on their hands because I, then I can stop with the hands. But I love to cook. That's I, what's so sad is I'm seeing over time that passion to feed your family is kind of slipping to the wayside. A lot of people I know get very busy and may have to buy and have things delivered. But if we could teach people, maybe that's something I was thinking I would love to do, is how simple good, healthy cooking is and can be. I would love the young people that are growing up today and, and not cooking and saying, oh, I don't like to cook. I'll just order out, you know, how much more your body it, 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 you nourish yourself so much better and, and you'll find that when you want to go out to eat, you get very picky because of what you're cooking and putting in your body. I always say, give your body what it needs and watch what it does. Wow. Can I, can I ask you something? And you, you don't have to answer now. You can just say, Sunit, I will think about it. But can you be the Diamond Beauty's home cooking expert? I would love to. <laughs> I would love that because I love to cook and I always love to tell people how to prep because I'm a big prepper. Every Sunday or Saturday, I can do these small little meals and I make them three or four times and then I show people how to freeze it. And then when you're like last night, I, we got in late. I had homemade um, 
soup made out of the lentils and peas and and artichokes you can name it um what else did we have in there sausage and corn and i had it frozen i took a couple things out we had a homemade dinner nice wow that's beautiful and you know that's a big thing not only in in america and i did see mostly in america people love more takeaways but here in south africa as well more takeaways but i i i will have a chat with you because we yeah. need somebody like you to oh, help I, I love, love it the young the youngsters oh, i also God. not a chef in the house my husband does the cooking but uh, we we will talk so my beautiful rick can i come to you I'm also going to show two of your credentials. It will be your own and then also um, your um, eye spark change while you're speaking. So I see that you also did a book, 12 Hours of Heaven, Lessons for a Better World. But I know that you, he said it was very difficult, especially in COVID time. If you can tell us the story and then I would love to hear how did you come up with this amazing book of yours? Well, thank you for asking the question first, Annette, because it's something that really started my whole journey for the past few years and I spark change and everything that I've been working on. But um, the ironic thing is that the story for 12 Hours of Heaven, you have to go back now 23 years um, to where that story originated because at that point, um, we were living in California. My wife and I had two young daughters. You know, they were one and three. My third daughter hadn't been born yet. And, you know, we were doing our best. As I said, I wasn't really, I wasn't super focused on my family and everything, but um, we were in a major car accident. So we were driving back from a birthday party a few hours away. And we were, I ended up um, losing control of vehicle in the rain and, and going across multiple lanes and going off the freeway and, and, rolling the car, flipping the car completely over and, and landing back on the wheels. And uh, miraculously, even though the car was completely demolished and, and, you know, witnesses thought we were killed and, you know, accident reports and everything, they thought we should have been severely hurt or killed. We were completely unharmed. And so that caused me to go into a period of reflection where I reflected on what was important in life and, and, you know, my faith and, and my family. And one day as I was in the few months after the accident, I was going through a lot of reflection and I would find myself just kind of sitting there, you know, daydreaming and, and thinking about everything. And one day I was sitting in my, my car and my mom had given me a little angel pin to put in my car, a little guardian angel pin to stick to the visor in my car. And, and uh, one day I was kind of staring up at that little visor and kind of daydreaming. And then all of a sudden this idea for a story hit me. Um, like I had just watched it, like it was a movie and I had just watched it. And I had it all in my head. Wow. And I, and I thought this was really special. I should write this. And so I started to write it, but as I like to say, you know, I wasn't ready uh, for to write the story at that point. And so I ended up writing about a chapter or a couple pages and you know, lost it on some laptop and never, you know, never finished. And then when COVID happened, I, um, I'm someone that likes to maintain that illusion of control, you know, that I, I have, you know, very structured, structured life and control and work and everything. And all of a sudden that was taken away. And, uh, you know, we had no control and, and, and everything was very unknown and uncomfortable. And that wasn't a, a good place for me mentally. So I started getting anxious and, and fearful of what the future was going to hold. And my business had slowed down because of the pandemic. So I was worried about, you know, revenue and, and you know, paying my bills, taking care of my family. And after a few weeks of being in that kind of dark place, I, I started realizing you know, you, I know better than, than, you know, to go there mentally. And I coach people on these things. And, and so I, um, I decided to focus on giving and helping others and, and realize, you know, I'm far better off. People were dying. People were in much worse situations. And so I said, you know, I, I need to do what I can to, to help people. So then I started volunteering and I, and I started, um, looking for ways to support others. 
And and then I wrote a, a blog article about using the time, the quarantine time when you know we were in lockdown and everything here where we live, um, using that time to become a better person, right? To practice some of that self-love and become better. And so I started, um, I wrote that article and then I said, you know, one of the things that I've always wanted to do is write that book because I was reminded of that. And, you know, as I was reflecting in, in that the time when I wanted to improve. And now my biggest excuse for not writing that book was always that I'd never had the time. But now I was given the gift of tons of time, <laughs> right? That we were all yeah. locked in our home. So um, I started writing and um, I started writing in mid April and, um, and er early, early, uh, early mid April. And in the, um, I, I just started going out about it methodically. I had never written a book. I said, I'm just going to write 500 words a day and, and write consistent. And, and then about halfway through that, that writing journey about, you know, six weeks in or so everything changed to where I started becoming really spiritually connected with God and, and really felt like, you know, the Holy spirit was kind of guiding me and, and felt that the story was just being given to me and, and that I was just the typist, right. That I wasn't really writing because I, I went from writing 500 words in a day to writing, you know, over 2000 in a couple hours. And, and wow. I ended up finishing the book, which I had, I had thought it would take me six months or more. And I ended up finishing in two and a half months. And, um, and, uh, and when I finished during that time of being just so spiritually connected, I it felt so personal and, and I didn't share that with anyone. And I really felt like, um, it was so special and, and like a private thing between me and God. And um, so I didn't share that with anyone. And then the other thing that was happening during that time is I was I would wake up in the middle of the night with with dreams and, and ideas and visions of, of that. I had to do more than just write the book. And that it was one of those dreams where uh, I envisioned I spark change and creating this you know community and this platform to you know, help make the world better, you know, probably similar to, you know, when you thought of diamond beauties and, and so that's where the idea was why I spark change was born. So when the book, when I finished the book, um, then I, like I said, I hadn't shared all of that with anyone, not even my wife, <laughs> I hadn't shared it with anyone. But then when I finished, I felt this intense urge to share, to tell everybody to go, you know, scream from a mountaintop, so to speak. So I went in my backyard and put the phone on a tripod and recorded a video and posted it on social media and shared it, you know, kind of similar to your video that you put, you know, up on, on YouTube. And I, I, I posted a video and shared it and, and it was, you know, told everyone what had gone, gone on, you know, for the past few months and my writing and the dreams and all that stuff. And, you know, that was kind of changing the direction of my life and um, the, Response was very positive. This, there was a lot of support, as you you know, thousands of times, and 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 I got a lot of support. And so then that led me into, um, you know, I, I published my book just a few months later in October, and and that led me into publishing the book, and that led me into I Spark Change, uh, launching I Spark Change in the fall of 2020, and and then creating and building that community, and and that's been the journey that I've been on since then, and um, you know, that's guided who I am and, and, you know, guided my purpose and, um, and really put a direction into, you know, everything I do. Um, but it wouldn't have happened, you know, without a couple of things happening, like the accident and then, you know, that time to become the person that I needed to become to write the book 20 years later and, you know, the pandemic. And there's just so many variables that I see as those are all just God connecting all the dots right. that I couldn't connect on my own. And, um, you know, making everything happen as part of his plan. Oh, amazing. Wow. I it's get beautiful. goosebumps. Can I, can I chime yes. in? Yes. I get goosebumps, Rick, listening to that because that's similar to with me. I had my stroke three years ago, which was the beginning of the pandemic. And when I had to go to the hospital, my husband wasn't allowed in the room mm. or on the floor. That was back then where... Nobody was allowed. And my thought was, if something happens, I'm going to die alone. 
and I just went back to thinking about all the people that did die alone. Yeah. And I, I have so many ideas of ways that things could have not been that bad, but it, during those, that five days in that hospital is when I connected. I was always very faithful, like yourself, grew up a Catholic. Uh, I went to school Same. in St. Peter's in, in Italy. That's where I went to church. But um, that connection to God when I was quiet and alone, and it gave me that purpose. First of all, he taught me to love myself. And I fought hard to get better because I was alone. I couldn't count on anybody. And I could hear him. And when I started to hear him, I started realizing I was hurting myself sometimes by not listening and following his guidance. And, and my grandmother, my beautiful grandmother used to also say, stop taking that pen out of God's hands. <laughs> and that's what I was doing. I was always doing that. And, and um, I have thought about writing a book and now you've just kind of <laughs> it's crazy because I thought about the same thing and it's, listening to your story is so powerful thank you for sharing that well um, thank you very much you're very welcome and yeah I, I hope it inspires you to you know write write that book and you know if i can give you any suggestions or tips or anything i mean i'm happy to do that um, but it, it's it, it you know what what really speaks to me is that you know you you took the um you you took the opportunity you know, when there was struggle to, to, uh, take strength out of that, you know, to become yeah. stronger out of that, out of those struggles. Yeah. I got tears in my eyes, my beautiful. I do too. I'm saying this when you bring on guests, sometimes it's for a purpose. Yeah. I, I must just say when the lady cancel and I ask you if you can join, I felt like there's nobody else that I wanted to have in this session. And I would have loved to have Linda as well because she has also a defining moment in her life that she actually have a Afghan um, a crochet. I call it the Afghan. It's, it's a, a very long <laughs> for crochet. And she has a story of this beautiful Afghan and how, how her life changed. Wow. And uh, I thought of her and Rick definitely and then the other lady. And then when she cancelled, I, when I close my eyes, because every guest, I will ask God, this is my my theme, who will be the best fit combination, but fit to, to bring the message out there to the world, because that's ultimately what we want to do, is to make the world a better place. And when I close my eyes, I saw your hat, and I, I saw the pink hat, and I, I said, I talk a lot in Afrikaans, so I said to, I will translate, I said, thank you, my living Jesus. So I said, thank you, my beautiful Lord. And I sent him a few kisses and then I asked you and you said yes. And then I put my chair at the back and I said, she said yes, she said yes. And then I put my... I pulled my chair back again and I started to work again. <laughs> I was so happy because I, I saw what guests you had and I, I had a good feeling. Oh, wow. So I wanted to say to you, uh, Rick, there's a lot of men out there that struggle through COVID a lot because there's a lot of them that because they must be responsible for the finances, they must be they responsible for the family. I can just think about my own husband, and they're not sh sure what's going to happen. I lost my, my they retrenched me in 2020, December 2020. Um, they just retrenched, retrenched me, so um, I didn't have a choice. I had to go. And then I didn't know what I'm going to do. So he had to try and help me. We, I could not go permanently to New Zealand. So there was a lot of things that he tried to help me with. But uh, how did you, I know that you went through this process with the book and everything, but it was it was especially for a man because it's, I think, I think it must be hard because you don't, you don't have your heart on your sleeve. So 
I don't know if you've got any comment. I know there's no question, but how did you experience that? And then you got this beautiful idea from God to write this book. I think that it's probably appropriate that, you know, your your group is all women. And, you know, I grew up with four older sisters and so and I have three daughters. And so I've been around around women all my life. But um, and you'll understand what I mean by that in a second is that I had I was always raised. And I think a lot of people in my generation, you know, was always raised to be very masculine. OK, so to be very masculine. And especially the fact that I, I had, you know, sisters, no brothers and everything. I felt I had to be overly masculine, right? And I was, you know, a great athlete and I was involved in leadership in school and government and, and you know, um, did a lot of things to, to portray that masculine persona, if you will. Okay. And it wasn't until... And I know my my daughters and my wife played a big a big part in this. I think over the years they have really helped me to grow. And I'll just use this term just because it's an easy way to to explain it. The feminine side, my you know my feminine side, right? Or to be more the emotional, you know, the those emotional uh, components, you know, of of who I am, and grow and develop those, and you know, things like um, being vulnerable in a situation or realizing that you don't have the answers and that you don't have control, you know, and that you, cause I'm someone that is a, is a, a problem solver by nature. That's how I've always, what I've always done in work and coaching and everything. And so to realize, you know, to be put in that situation where I didn't, that was very hard, as I said. And so to realize that, you know, that's okay. And that you can, you know, you can focus on what you can control, like focus on yourself. And, and so what, what helped me was to tap into some of that emotion to tap into, you know, being vulnerable, being authentic, being, you know, just letting all facets of who I am show. Um, and I've described it this way for, for, um, I think on another show was, um, I worked with someone and they they worked in theater. And so they explained the a character diamond when when you write, you know, when you have a character and, and it helped me in my writing. But when when you have a character, they have what's called a character diamond. So, you know, they have the top and the, and the beautiful sides, but they have the flaws and the imperfections and the, you know, the things every every hero in every movie that they have their imperfections, right? They're not perfect and they have their weakness. You know, Superman has his kryptonite and everything. And so what I realized is that I was, and I think a lot of people are this and maybe a lot of males were only trying to show certain aspects of that character, right? Only trying to show the, the strength and, and the, you know, masculinity and everything but a diamond doesn't get its brilliance from just the top. A diamond gets its brilliance from all facets, all areas that, you know, that little imperfection on the bottom is going to make it, it be radiant on the top. And so it wasn't until I decided to share all aspects of my character diamond of who I was, that I started to truly grow as an individual and, and truly understand who I was was who I am and my potential and my purpose and, and truly, I guess, feel what God, you know, what his plans are for me. Wow. That's actually beautiful. Beautiful. So can you believe we've got three minutes left? Can you believe? Oh, geez, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. So my beautiful Deborah, can I ask you to give us your golden nugget again and your grandmother saying, and the last one your grandmother also said, because I would, I love it. I love it. You want me to put them in there or say them again? No, you can say it again for us, please. Uh, it's like, today I am too blessed to be depressed, too anointed to be disappointed. And um, after me, you come first and stop taking the pen out of God's hands. I love it. I love it. I must just Thank do this. You. Yeah, you, those little things sometimes you you hear them, but you just kind of in one ear and out the other. And I think yeah. that's what happened. 
And it, that time I had in the hospital to be truly alone, because I do come from an Italian family, very big family, noisy family. So being in that hospital alone was my time to just, oh, hi, <laughs> I want you, that to meet my friend Deborah Berry. You two are going to be the best of friends. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. She oh, does wow. re she does beautiful uh, retreats, and and you will love her. Thank you must you, uh, oh, yes, and you must invite her to the Diamond Beauties because all new Diamond Beauties have a coffee chat with me. So beautiful, Good. Deborah, you must come to the Diamond Beauties and we will have a coffee chat. My beautiful Rick, please tell us your golden nugget. So uh, first, just to clarify, my golden nugget just in general or from today's from today's chat? He can give you today's chat and in general. Okay. First, first from today's chat. Um, I, I, I love everything that Deborah shared. So I'm going to, I'm going to take those and I'll, I will give you credit. Um, I, I will say from today's chat is, is just to um, be the best version of yourself, love yourself first and, and become, you know, the best version of yourself. So you can, you can truly share that love with others. And my golden nugget that I love to share all the time as part of I Spark Change is that, Everyone has the power to change the world and it, it starts with yourself. That's why it's the I and I spark change. So it starts with yourself. So, um, you know, go out there and, and you know, make a difference in, in someone else's life because um, you can do that every day. We all have the power to do so. Wow. Amazing. So Debra said, what a happy show meeting uh, you, Rick. And then can we all give one, simultaneously a kiss? One, two, three. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hey, come and Deborah. She's so Thank sweet. You. What a beautiful spirit she is, too. Thank you, my beautiful ladies, for being on the Diamond Beauties. Thank you, Deborah, for your comments. Thank you, my viewers, for watching this show. My beautiful Deborah, thank you so much for being here. My beautiful Rick, thank you for being here. I'm going to say to, I'm going to ask you now a question, but first of all, the audience, please look after yourself small often and you know my viewers i have to ask my guests first and then i will come to you and we want to hear you screaming so my beautiful deborah my beautiful rick will you have a dance with me of course <laughs> oh. okay my beautiful viewers will you have a dance with me can you hear? They say yes. They say yes. They said yes. I heard them all. <laughs> oh, let me play. Um, I cannot play uh, Walking on Sunshine, but this is my song. I cover the world with love that I have given her most of my wordings and she made a song for me. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.